There are no further introductions. Therefore, it is time for question period. The member from Leeds, Grenville. Thanks, uh, Speaker. My, my question is for the Premier. The member from Simcoe Gray is a man of great integrity. As Minister of Health, when the integrity of his office was called into question and his ministry was being investigated by the Integrity Commissioner, yep. the member stepped aside as minister. He believed in the doctrine of ministerial responsibility, and he did the right thing. He stepped aside until the investigation cleared his name. Now the Minister of Energy has been named in a charge laid by the OPP. The minister should also do the right thing. Mr. Speaker, has the Minister of Energy offered to step aside until the case against the Premier's former Chief Deputy Chief of Staff has concluded? Um, Mr. Speaker, um, I know that the, uh, the member opposite understands that uh, that this is a matter that is before the courts. Mr. Speaker, he understands also that there have been many, many questions answered and answered in this ans asked and answered in this legislature outside of this legislature. Mr. Speaker, um, we will continue to uh, to cooperate with any ongoing investigation. Mr. Speaker, but the matter is before the courts, and I know that the member opposite understands that. Back to the Premier. My predecessor, as member of Leeds Grenville, took his role in this democratic institution very, very seriously. While there was an investigation, the Solicitor General stepped aside and he returned when he was cleared of any wrongdoing. Premier, the Minister of Energy needs to do the same. Mr. Speaker, will the Premier ask the Minister to step aside until the case against her yep. former Deputy Chief of Staff yep. has concluded? Yep. I think, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I just want to make uh, one point very clear because I think it's important uh, to note uh, that the that the Minister from Energy is under no investigation, uh, Speaker. Uh, there are no charges laid against the Minister of, uh, of Energy. So the assertion the member opposite is making are absolutely incorrect, uh, Speaker. And I do want to remind again and echo what the Premier said, that this matter is before the courts. Uh, there are allegations and charges laid against certain individuals. None of them serve in this legislature, Speaker. And we should let the courts uh, handle the matter uh, based on, on evidence and, and the rules of procedure and the evidential rules that apply in the courts, not in this legislature. Thank you very much. Thank you. Final supplementary. I I'm going to go back to the Premier. I'm, I'm puzzled by that answer. When the integrity of a minister or their office are called into question, yeah. the minister has a responsibility to step aside Here. until the investigation is complete. When the member for Eglinton Lawrence was criticized by the Auditor General for a scandal in his ministry, yeah. the member stepped aside. Yeah. Our current Minister of Energy has been named in a charge laid by the OPP, and he accuses them of wrongdoing. It is disrespectful to the office he holds to remain as a minister while the case Absolutely. is before the courts. Mr. Speaker, will the Premier demand that the minister step aside until the case against her former deputy chief of staff has concluded? Start the clock. Can you it, please? Can you see it, please? Thank you. Attorney General. Uh, speaker, lower, anyway. the Minister of Energy is under no investigation. No. The, there has been no charges laid against the Minister of Energy. Um, he, uh, um, he has cooperated uh, with, with all investigations that has taken place up to this point. Uh, speaker, the member opposite knows very well. He knows uh, your uh, comments, Speaker, yesterday that you make in this, in this House, and I'm sure he read them again last night. Uh, that this matter is before the courts and the only appropriate place for this matter uh, to be tried or litigated is in a court of law. Thank you. Good question. The member from Leeds, uh, Speaker, my question is for the Premier. I want to remind the Legislature of a time when Liberal ministers had integrity. The that former Minister of Finance, Greg Sorbera, now listen, listen up. That'd be a while ago. Come to order. If I knew who said it, they'd have to withdraw. And if you did say it, you can withdraw without me telling you to. I'm not referring to anyone. I made it clear. Are you withdrawing? Thank you. Carry on. 
<laughs> Minister of Finance Greg Sorbera resigned from his office when he became aware aware of a search warrant alleging he was the subject of an RCMP investigation. His name was simply in a search warrant, and he stepped aside until his name was cleared. Now we have a top Liberal aide being accused of bribing a minister of the Crown, and the minister still holds office. Mr. Speaker, this is incredibly inappropriate. Why does the Premier refuse to have the minister step aside until the case against her former deputy chief of staff has concluded? Mr. Speaker, as the Attorney General has said, the uh, Minister of Energy is under no investigation. This matter is before the court, and the member opposite knows full well that we need to let that court process unfold, Mr. Speaker, not in this legislature, but within the court system, Mr. Speaker. Back to, the, back to the Premier. At no time have I accused the Minister of wrongdoing, but the charges against Pat Sorbera yep. speak for themselves. Yep. She is accused of offering an alleged bribe to the current Minister of Energy. Regardless, being named in a charge is unbecoming of a Minister of the Crown, and the Minister must step aside. Mr. Speaker, will the Premier turn to the Minister, extend her hand, and accept his letter of resignation? Thank you. Thank you, Premier. General. Well, Mr. Speaker, appreciate the theatrics on the other other side from the member opposite. Uh, let's be absolutely clear, Speaker. Uh, the Minister of Energy is under no investigation whatsoever. Uh, charges have been laid against uh, two individuals which do not serve in this legislature. The matter is before the court, Speaker, and that's where it should be tried uh, and litigated. Thank you very much. Thank you. Supplementary. Back to the Premier. This Liberal government has killed a lot of traditions in this province. Yep. But it's sad to say they've killed tr the tradition, actually know the duty of ministerial responsibility. Yep. There used to be a time when ministers took their integrity seriously and believed they had to have the trust of the province. But that no longer exists in Liberal Ontario. Mr. Speaker, one last time, I implore the Premier, please Premier, do the right thing. Will you stand up, Premier, walk over to the minister's desk and ask him to resign? Thank you. Attorney General. Speaker, uh, once again, um, the She's minister is under no investigation. Off. The allegations in questions that are now before the courts has nothing to do with minister's responsibility as the minister of energy either. So, Speaker, there is no nexus. There is no connection. Uh, this is a totally separate matter. Uh, that does not uh, involve the minister and his responsibilities as the Minister of Energy. The most appropriate place for this matter to be dealt with is in the court of law. It is for a reason. It's stated. Uh, the rule is stated in our standing order rules. Speaker, you uh, referred to it very clearly yesterday, and I ask the member opposite and all honourable members of this House to respect the rules that are laid out in our standing orders and let this matter be dealt with in the court of law. Thank you. Two, new question. The member from Bramley Gore, Moulton. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Premier. There is very clearly an allegation of bribery uh, against Ms. Sabera. The allegation of bribery also includes uh, a second allegation that is inferred. When you, when you allege to bribe someone, there is also government. a potential of someone accepting that bribery. That's another allegation, a potential allegation. During this investigation, it's before the courts, absolutely. The honourable thing to do in this circumstance is to have the minister step down while this investigation is going on. He's connected in some way. So why hasn't the premier yet accepted the resignation of the minister of energy? Why not? Attorney General. Well, again, uh, Mr. Speaker, I will say to the member opposite, he used the word allegations perhaps three or four times, and he's right. These are just allegations, and the only place for those allegations to be proven right or wrong, Speaker, is in a court of law, not in this legislature. There's a long-standing rule that relates to uh, matters not be litigated in this House uh, if they're before a court or a tribunal. The member opposite is a, is a learned counsel. I know his, his rules well. He's been a defense counsel. He understands the, the notion uh, and the important principle of presumption of innocence. I only ask him to He's respect those, Speaker. Thank you. 
Supplementary. Thank you very much, Mr. Pre Mr. Speaker. I think the government doesn't understand what's going on here. This is not a matter of litigating the case. No one's trying to litigate the case here. And uh, if, you're, if you have that belief, you're clearly mistaken. This is a matter of integrity. The people of Ontario deserve a government with integrity. They deserve a premier that puts the interests of the people of this province ahead of her party, of her friends, of protecting people in, in, in cabinet positions. Given the very serious natures of the allegations, and yes, they are allegations, but they are very serious. Given the serious nature of these allegations, there is a responsibility for the Premier to do something. Does the Premier think it's appropriate for the Minister to continue in Cabinet while these allegations are ongoing? Mr. Speaker, absolutely. The matter is serious. Therefore, the matter is, uh, shall not the be from dealt Barry. with in a, in a partisan environment like the question period, Speaker. That's why that, that particular rules ex exist. These are, these are allegations these are, uh, that have to be dealt in front of an impartial uh, judge, Speaker. That is why we've got the independence between the, between the judiciary, uh, the executive, and our legislative arm, Speaker. We should all respect those very important divisions of powers, uh, Mr. Speaker, and we should not be uh, litigating allegations, uh, conjectures, speculations, and theories in this House. I urge members opposite again, Speaker, that we should let this matter to be dealt with in the court of law. Thank you. Thank you. Final supplementary. Mr. Speaker, I urge the government to review this question, these questions in Hansard. There is no litigation of the offence here. I'm not litigating the offence. I'm simply saying the people of this province deserve a government with integrity. When you have allegations that involve a cabinet minister, there is certain responsibility Responsibilities that this government must act on. It's very clear that this has never happened in the history of this province ever before, where we have a cabinet minister that is involved in allegations. The allegations involve his name, involve a bribe of the minister of this crown. It's very clear. The allegations are absolutely clear. So why will a minister not step down and prove to Ontarians that they're capable of putting aside their blind partisanship, that they're capable of putting the interests of the people of this province ahead of their own party's interests? Question. Why can't they do the honourable thing? You see that, please? You see that, please? Attorney General. Uh, uh, Speaker, uh, I think the member opposite knows, and I know he's, he's, he's doing his very best uh, to stretch uh, this, this issue. Uh, Speaker, the allegations that in question has nothing to do with the minister's nothing responsibility as the Minister of Energy. The allegations uh, uh, are not towards uh, the, the Minister of Energy. Uh, the, the, the government and the Premier, Premier Speaker remains very focused on uh, their responsibilities and their obligations to the people of Ontario. This is a matter uh, that uh, is before the court speaker and the member opposite knows very well that it should be litigated before the courts, not in this legislature. Thank you. Thank you. New question. Member from Brandon, we'll go Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question again is to the Premier. Mr. Speaker, I think the government needs to get new speaking notes. No one is talking about litigating this case. We're asking a very clear thing here. During the last provincial election, this Premier promised Ontarians. She promised Ontarians that she would be different. She promised the people that this, under her leadership, that they, this party would not be Minister of the Environment, come to order. Like her predecessors was. Yet again, the people of this province are disappointed. Will the Premier put aside her blind partisanship, put aside her blind partisanship in terms of protecting her party and protect the people's interests, put aside her blind partisanship and support the needs of the people of this province and ask the Minister of Energy to simply step aside during this very serious allegation? Question. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, you know, the, uh, the member opposite is, uh, is asking us to focus on, uh, on the people of Ontario, and I just want to say, Mr. Speaker, that every morning when I get up and every morning when we begin our work here, we are focusing on the people of Ontario. We're focusing 
on the young people in our schools. We're focusing on the seniors who need support in hospitals, Mr. Speaker, and in their homes. We're focusing on the needs of our municipalities to have infrastructure, Mr. Speaker. All of that is the work that we are all. The member from Renfrew Nipissing Pembroke come to order. Premier. That is the work of our government, Mr. Speaker. That is the plan that we are, uh, are implementing. I have been very open with the media. I've been open in the legislature. I have answered questions over and over again. I said in 2015 that if and when there were charges laid, Mr. Speaker, that Pat Sorbera would step aside. Pat Sorbera has stepped aside. She, did it. she has done exactly what I said would happen, Mr. Speaker. Now the matter is before the courts, and we. Thank you. The member from Prince Edward Hastings, come to order. Supplementary. Mr. Speaker, it shouldn't take criminal charges for the government to display that they have integrity. It shouldn't require that. This is yet another example of the Premier allowing her concern for her party to take precedence over the responsibilities of governing this province, that these are the responsibilities of the Premier. It's again Liberals protecting Liberals. Will the Premier for once stop being so blindly partisan and put, us, put the province's interests first? Understand that the faith in this government is being questioned right now. The province has a responsibility to ensure that that faith is kept strong and ask the minister to step aside during these allegations. Hey, Mr. Speaker, I'm not a lawyer, but the member opposite is a lawyer, so he knows we're not talking about criminal charges, Mr. Speaker. Even though he uses that language, I assume intentionally. I can't, uh, I can't second guess that, but I assume he uses that intentionally. But these are not criminal charges we're talking about. I said in 2015 that if and when charges were laid, that. Uh, Pat Sorbera would step aside. She has stepped aside, Mr. Speaker. She has done that, and our responsibility, all of us, is to understand that under a presumption of innocence, that matter is now before the courts. I would expect of all of the members in the NDP. The member for Renfrew Nipissing Pembroke, second time. The Minister of Indigenous Relations, come to order. <coughs> Supplementary. Mr. Speaker, did the Premier learn nothing from waiting so long to dismiss her top aide over this scandal? She said over and over in this assembly that she stood by Ms. Sobera and that Ms. Sobera had done nothing wrong. Yet here we are. Two days after Ms. Sabera was charged by the OPP, and the Premier is making the same mistake again. She has an opportunity to do the right thing. There are allegations, absolutely there are allegations, and the Minister is entitled to, and everyone involved in this is entitled to the presumption of innocence. But there's a certain perception here. There's a perception that there is an allegation involving the minister. There's a bribery allegation of that minister. That minister has a responsibility to step aside during this investigation. It's the right thing to do. So will the, the premier do the right thing and ask her minister Question. of energy to step aside until, uh, until this matter is dealt with? Thank you. Attorney General. Be seated, please. Be seated, please. Thank you. Attorney General. Clear in terms of the actions she has taken. Uh, when uh, Ms. Sorpara uh, was, uh, was charged under the uh, Elections Act uh, uh, offences, uh, she no longer, the Premier took the step of ensuring that she no longer works uh, uh, for the Ontario Liberal Party. Speaker. Um, in this matter, there are no allegations. Uh, that relates to the Minister of Energy. There are no allegations that relates to his responsibility uh, as the Minister of Energy. Speaker, uh, they, uh, they, these are allegations that very uh, uh, separate and aside uh, from the business of this House. Speaker, and uh, the only appropriate uh, venue, the only right place for that matter to be uh, dealt with, Speaker, is in the court of law. Okay, I know the member opposite me. knows, and I respect all members to respect. That very important principle here, here. in our legislative democracy. Thank you. Here, here. Thank you. New question. The member from Nipissing. 
Thank you and good morning, uh, Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Finance. We also know there is a trust deficit in the government. Now we know there is a financial deficit as well. This morning, the Financial Accountability Officer confirmed what our PC caucus has been saying all along. The government has a multi-billion dollar hole in their budget forecast. He confirmed the government is using one-time money from the sale of assets to artificially balance the budget in an election year, but the FAO expects a $2.6 billion deficit that year when the minister told Ontarians they balance. The FAO also told us the only way they are going to balance after that is to raise taxes again or cut services further. Question. Through you, I ask the minister, are they raising taxes again, or can we expect more cuts to frontline services? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I'd like to thank uh, the FEO for his report. I hope he recovers soon. As we all know, he's on medical leave. Um, but let me start by saying yet again that we're committed to balancing the budget by 2017-18 and again the year after that, Mr. Speaker. We're doing so by controlling our spending, by stimulating economic growth through some of the strategic investments that we make. The FAO himself has stated Ontario's economy posted strong, real GDP growth. It's very difficult to uh, move forward when members uh, on the same side as the answer being put are engaged in heckling back and forth. So let's just stop, please. They don't want to hear what exactly has happened. What has happened is that we've beaten our target seven years in a row, Mr. Speaker. What has happened is because of our strategic investments, we have outpaced G7, the United States. We are the country and jurisdiction as well, Mr. Speaker. And by so doing, we're lowering unemployment and growing our economy. Supplementary. Back to the minister. Well, the numbers are wrong. We've been telling this government the numbers are wrong, and now the FAO confirmed that today. The FAO said, quote, growth in business investment has been disappointing over the last four years. Well, that's no wonder, Speaker, Minister given that the and Culture has and raised taxes by more than 20 per cent in the last five years. The FAO also confirmed that debt levels will continue to skyrocket another $64 billion to a record $370 billion. Under this government, Ontario is now both the most indebted, yet the most taxed province in Canada. It's clear their repeated pattern of waste, mismanagement and scandal sure. has come home to roost. Sure. Speaker. I ask the minister through you, will the fall Question. economic statement recognize the fiscal risks revealed by the FAO, and will he update his false Thank projections you. in this budget? Mr. Mr. Speaker, the fall economic statement will indeed talk about the challenges faced by all countries and jurisdictions around the world and recognize the leadership that Ontario has taken to ensure that we come to balance by 2017-18 and thereafter, Mr. Speaker. The FAO states Ontario's economy posted strong real GDP growth over the second half of 2015 and into the first quarter of 2016. He also said that he expects that because of the strategic investments that we're making, a boost to growth will occur in the third quarter. Mr. Speaker, what has actually happened? Merchandise exports has increased by 10 per cent in the province of Ontario. Wholesale trade has been up by 7 per cent. Retail sales are up by 6 per cent, and manufacturing sales are up by 7 per cent. Mr. Speaker, we recognize the challenges. We're controlling and being disciplined in our spending, and we are investing in our future and our growth to grow the economy and come to balance, as we said we would, and we've exceeded and surpassed our targets every year for the last seven years. Can you see it, please? Can you see it, please? New question, member from Nickel Belt. Merci, Monsieur le Président. My question for the Premier Minister. On Tuesday, Pat Sorbara was charged under the Election Act with allegedly bribing the current Minister of Energy. The charge implicating the Minister of Energy has shaken the trust of the good people of Sudbury. Yes. If the yes. Premier agrees that trust is critical to our electoral system, will she ask the Minister to resign from her cabinet? Attorney General. 
Attorney General. Uh, Speaker, as I have said it on, on numerous occasions uh, before in this question period, this matter is before the courts. The only appropriate place for this matter to be to be dealt with is in the in the court of law, and I urge all members to respect that very important principle. Thank you. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you, Speaker. Formal charges have been laid by the OPP against Mrs. Sorbera, that name Glenn Tebow. We can all read it. Mm -hmm. This is about the good people of Sudbury being able to trust their elected representative. When an MPP is implicated, is named in a bribery charge, trust in that MPP is obviously thrown into question. Will the Premier do the right thing by the good people of Sudbury and ask the Minister of Energy to resign his cabinet position? Mr. Speaker, the, 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 the Minister of, of Energy, the member from Sudbury, is an honourable man. He has, in his entire life, have served his community. Uh, he served. Finish, please. Speaker, the member uh, serves his family, his community, uh, with utmost integrity. These allegations uh, has nothing to do, uh, Speaker, with uh, with the member and his responsibilities as the Minister of Energy. Uh, Speaker, Answer. as I've said it before, this matter is before the courts, and the only appropriate place for it to be to be tried is in the court of law. Thank you. Thank you. New question. The member from Ottawa South. Speaker, uh, Speaker, my question is for the Minister of Transportation. Despite the uh, recent re warm weather we've seen over the last few days, winter is coming, and that means we are quickly approaching shorter days and more hours of darkness. Speaker, safety in our roads is always a priority, but it's clear that when there's more hours of darkness, we need to take more care on our roads. We know that certain road users, specifically cyclists and pedestrians, are at a higher risk on our roads. And Mr. Speaker, in my riding of Ottawa South, there just learned there was a cyclist struck this morning, and so every few days I hear of a, a pedestrian or a cyclist being struck, and it's a, a great concern, I know, to all members of this House, road safety for those people they represent. So, Mr. Speaker, I'm particularly interested to hear about what the government is doing with pedestrians in mind, so could the minister please inform this House what we are doing in this regard? Thank you. Thank you. Minister of Transportation. Thanks very much. Uh, thanks very much, Speaker. I want to begin, of course, by thanking the member from Ottawa South for the question and for his advocacy on this issue. Uh, unfortunately, Speaker, last evening and over the course of the last number of weeks, uh, a number of pedestrians, pedestrians and other road users like cyclists, have been hit uh, by vehicles in cities like Toronto and in others across the province. Speaker, of course, this is extremely unfortunate for all of us to hear, but it does go to show that we all have a coll collective responsibility both to do more and to do better. With darker conditions, and in this case, recently rainy conditions as well, uh, there is a, an increased risk for collisions. I should also point out, Speaker, this coming weekend, the clocks, the times are changing, uh, and it's, it's particularly at this time of year that issues relating to road safety are of particular importance. Uh, Speaker, I purposely said collisions and not accidents. That because, because many of the collisions that we're discussing on our roadways are, in fact, preventable. In my follow-up answer, Speaker, I'll talk a little bit more about a promotional campaign that's underway thank to you. shed light on this issue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank the minister for that answer. Uh, and it's, I'm glad that he used the word collisions because many of these things are preventable. And I'm glad that the ministry is working so closely uh, with the road safety partners. I know in the city of Ottawa, the Ottawa Police and their STEP program right now are focusing on red light and uh, stop sign runners. So I want to congratulate them for their work. So, and as the minister noted uh, in his answer, we're all going to be returning to our ridings next week. Something I'm sure we're all looking forward to. And I know that this issue is of top priority to the people that we represent. Safety on roads, uh, safety of, especially uh, in my riding, uh, the children going to school. I heard of one yesterday being struck by a vehicle. And this is a great concern to us all. So I, I, I'd like to ask the minister again to further elaborate on what we're doing for pedestrian safety. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. Thanks very much, Speaker. Again, I thank the member for the follow-up question. Speaker, just this past Wednesday, I was very happy to participate alongside a number of our road safety partners at a pedestrian safety event. This particular campaign's slogan, Speaker, is Be Alert and Be Seen. 
Speaker, I think this is a critical message for all of our road users, particularly those that are in uh, that are either pedestrians or are cycling. Speaker, and I want to encourage all members of the House to help spread the word around this particular campaign. Speaker, uh, over the years, our government has increased penalties for drivers. Um, by both introducing and, and increasing demerit points for violations at high-risk, high-impact locations on our roads. And everyone here will know that in June of 2015, Bill 31 passed this legislature with all party support. This important piece of legislation requires drivers, for example, to yield the whole roadway to pedestrians at school crossings and pedestrian crossovers, and it also provides municipalities Answer. with the option to request crossing devices on low-speed, low-volume road speaker. Our work is not done. The Ministry of Transportation will continue to work with road partners Thank to you. make sure that we get it right. Thanks very much. New question. The member from Scarborough, Ruth River. Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Premier. We know Jerry Lahey Jr. believes he had the ability to offer court, appointment, jobs, whatever court, to candidates in Sudbury. But what we don't know, Mr. Speaker, is who ordered the Premier's Deputy Chief of Staff and top of a Liberal fundraiser <coughs> to offer Andrew Olivier and the current Minister of Energy an alleged bribe. Thank you. Thank you very much, Speaker. And I, I would uh, uh, um, ask of the member opposite that I think uh, he, he knows very well uh, exactly what the uh, what the rules in this House are, Speaker, that this is a matter that is before the courts and it's highly inappropriate for him to ask that question. Uh, for the any member from Hamilton East, Tony Creed. Why did Tony really withdraw? Thank you. Supplementary. The member from Whitby, Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. We know, and to the Premier, we know just one day before Jerry Law, he'd offered Mr. Olivier, and I quote, appointments, jobs, or whatever, end quote, Pat Severa called the Deputy Director of HR and the Premier's Office of Public Appointments and Human Resources on December the 10th. But what we don't know, Mr. Speaker, is who ordered the Premier's Deputy Chief of Staff and a top Liberal fundraiser to offer Andrew Olivier and the current Minister of Energy an alleged bribe. Uh, uh, speaker, again, these are allegations uh, that have not been proven in the in the in the court. Uh, the member from the P and Carlton, come to order. Uh, they, the court will, dis uh, dis uh, will dis uh, decide, uh, Speaker, whether uh, the veracity of these these allegations. In the meantime, Speaker, we have a very important principle, and that is a presumption of innocence. Right. And I respect, uh, uh, ask, and respect all members will uh, will respect that very important principle, Speaker. Um, it will be highly inappropriate for us. Uh, to answer any questions relating to this matter in the House, <laughs> given that the matter is before the course. Thank you. Thank you. New question. The member from Kitchener, Waterloo. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Attorney General. It's very clear in the Election Act that directly or indirectly giving or procuring an inducement to get someone to run is in contravention of the Election Act. We learned yesterday that one of Pat Cerbera's charges has to do with allegedly inducing the Minister of Energy. These charges are an issue of public trust and confidence in this government. Does the Attorney General think that the same rules should apply to anyone who accepts a position or a benefit to run for office? Speaker, the member asking uh, a question in, in, in light of an allegation that is uh, contained uh, in the charges this. that were la laid. Number one. Number two, Speaker, she's asking for my legal interpretation, and I'm not a, a, a legal expert in the matters of Elections Act. Number three, Speaker, I would rely on the courts to determine and, and, and interpret that particular yeah. uh, provision um, as, and also as it relates to the allegations before. That is exactly why, Speaker, that is exactly why it is highly inappropriate for these the members to Lattard, come to order. in this House, Speaker, and I urge all members uh, to let the courts do their job um, and, uh, and not litigate this matter in the, in, the, in the House. Thank you. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you again uh, to the Attorney General. I do find it interesting that a government under the shadow of scandal dealing with alleged bribery thinks that they can
can unilaterally change or interpret, interpret election laws in Ontario. Yesterday, our deputy leader filed a complaint with Elections Ontario asking the chief electoral officer to investigate the Minister of Energy. Now, the Minister of Energy is on the record as saying the Premier and I had conversations about roles within government. The role of a backbencher, the role of a minister, we don't know. But we do want to know, and in the opinion of the Attorney General, why does the Premier think that the rules uh, only apply to some people and not all? Mm -hmm. Speaker, uh, speaker, uh, this, uh, speaker, this matter is, is very clear. There's allegations that, laid, uh, there are allegations that are laid against two individuals who do not serve in the House. Uh, the allegations uh, does not relate to uh, any responsibility uh, of the Minister of, of Energy. Uh, I mean, asking any any qu such questions, Speaker, uh, in my view, are are, are not relevant. Uh, and any allegations, Speaker, that are that are uh, to be dealt with in this House are to be dealt with in the, in, the, in the court of law, Speaker. This is not this is not the the place that uh, that uh, member officers seek for my legal interpretation on a particular provision of law. Are nor for me to offer those those interpretations. That's exactly the role of, of our course of speaker. I trust our judiciary, Answer. and I, I urge all members uh, to leave this matter before Good the course. Question. Thank you. Thank you. New question. The member from Davenport. Mr. Speaker, and my question this morning is to the Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sport. I know that members of this House value the important work that the Ontario Trillium Foundation does to build healthy and vibrant communities across Ontario. Last week, Minister McMahon was in Brampton to announce the most recent round of grants that have been approved by the Trillium Foundation. As part of this announcement, the Minister also spoke to a broader province-wide commitment to support grant recipients across Ontario. In my own riding of Davenport, the Centre for Mindfulness Studies and Native Women in the Arts received over $50,000 through Trillium to help people who are marginalized as they take on leadership roles and improve community life. These programs have an impact on the lives of over 180 people in the community. Mr. Speaker, through you, can the minister please inform this House about this most recent round of grants okay. and the important impact that this round of Trillium Foundation grants will have? Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sport. Thank you, Speaker. I'm pleased to rise and answer the members' questions about the Ontario Trillium Foundation. And I want to thank her, Speaker, for the important work, advocacy work that she does in her community on behalf of the non-for-profit sector. Here, here. So important. I greatly value the important work that Trillium does, Speaker, right across our province. It's important that we acknowledge it and that our government remains supportive of the Trillium Foundation. It is one of Canada's leading charitable grant-making foundation and helps us build strong and healthy communities. I was pleased to visit the Multicultural Community Centre in Brampton last week to announced that the Trillium Foundation will be investing $31.6 million wow. through 152 here, here. grants right across Ontario, Speaker, here, here. bringing positive change to the people of Brampton, the members riding as well, and nearly 500,000 Ontarians in every corner of our province. Wow. Speaking to members of this House, I'm already hearing about the positive impact that this investment Answer. will have, and I'm excited, Speaker, to announce that we're going to continue to support the Ontario Trillium Foundation. I look forward to expanding Thank on my you. answer in the supplementary. Here, Thank here. you, Speaker. I want to thank the minister for, for this, and it is fantastic to hear how wide-reaching and helpful the Trillium Foundation has been to my community of Davenport and to communities all across this province. I also want to acknowledge the importance of the hundreds of dedicated and knowledgeable volunteers who make up grant review teams across the province. Each year, more than 3,000 applications are reviewed by grant review teams who act as local eyes and ears for the Trillium Foundation. They play a vital role role in our province's not-for-profit sector. It's important that the Trillium Foundation has processes in place to ensure the best applications ultimately receive funding. I understand that the Trillium Foundation moved forward with a plan last week to improve customer service to applicants across Ontario. Can the minister please speak to this development and the role it will have on the Trillium Foundation's granting process? Wow. 
Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and to the member. Uh, speaker, our government greatly values the work that the Ontario Trillium Foundation help, does to help uh, applicants right across our province, and that's why I'm pleased that the foundation is moving forward with a number of changes that will improve customer service. Specifically, the Trillium Foundation is moving to introduce a single application deadline for each of its funding programs. This brings the foundation in line with industry best practices adopted by other granting organizations, such as the Ontario Media Development Corporation and the Ontario Arts Council. Council. Ultimately, these steps are about modernization and improving customer service. And as a former grant recipient speaker, I very much appreciated the support that I got from Trillium and applaud their board for taking these additional steps to improve service delivery. As we move forward toward our, toward our province's 150th anniversary, I look forward to working with Trillium to support communities Answer. across Ontario and to continuing to make a difference in the lives of all Ontarians. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you, Speaker. My uh, question is to the Premier. Pr Speaker, we know Jerry Lahey Jr. Uh, told Andrew Olivia that he was calling, quote, on behalf of the Premier, unquote. But what we don't know, Mr. Speaker, is who ordered the Premier's Deputy Chief of Staff and a top Liberal fundraiser to offer Andrew Olivier and the current <laughs> Minister of Energy an alleged bribe. Speaker, to the Premier, through you to the Premier, who gave the order? Attorney General. Uh, uh, Speaker, you know the, this question has been asked uh, many times, and just because it's been asked in a in a in a in a repeated manner does not mean that the answer changes. Speaker, the Premier has been has been very open and transparent. Uh, speaker to Ontarians, uh, to the media, to this legislature, and asked many questions. Now we are at a stage, Speaker, as you are well aware, and the members, uh, members of, uh, in this House are well aware that there are charges being laid, and it will be highly inappropriate for this matter to be dealt with in this House, Speaker. It will be highly inappropriate to answer any questions uh, in this House as it relates to the allegations, Speaker. The only appropriate place is in a court of law, and I ask all members to respect that very important principle. Thank you. Thank you. Supplementary. The member from Fallen Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Premier. We know that Pat Sorbara told Andrew Olivier, and I quote, so you're being asked to make the sacrifice this time, and that also can go a long way in terms of opening up options, like in terms of being part of a party, right? End of quote. But what we don't know, Mr. Speaker, is who ordered the Premier's Deputy Chief of Staff and a top Liberal fundraiser to offer Andrew Olivier and the current Minister of Energy an alleged bribe. Again, Speaker, you can tell by the nature of questions, they are, these are uh, questions as related directly to the allegations that are before the court, Speaker. As I've stated earlier, it will be highly inappropriate uh, to, uh, to answer any questions uh, on an issue that is uh, before the court, Speaker, and I would urge all members uh, to respect uh, a very important rule that is outlined in our standing orders, the rule around subjudice, uh, which, uh, which uh, instructs us, Speaker, uh, not to, to debate issues, not to discuss issues uh, that are before any court or tribunal. This, this matter fairly and clearly, uh, Speaker, uh, falls in, under that rule. So I uh, ask all members, Speaker, to respect uh, your words yesterday, uh, and, uh, and uh, 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 we would not be answering any questions that are before the course. Thank you. Thank you. A new question, the member from Toronto, Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. My question to the Minister of Energy. Given his role in the Premier's Cabinet as Minister of Energy and recent news about being named in an alleged scandal, Ontarians have questions about whether or not he will be able to perform his job duties as a Cabinet Minister. Ontarians want to know, has the Minister offered his resignation to the Premier? Premier? No, to the, it was to the Minister. Minister. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm very pleased to rise and uh, speak to this. Uh, um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, um, no, I have not. And, uh, Mr. Speaker, there's absolutely uh, all of these are allegations, Mr. Speaker. I stand with integrity and work for the people of Sudbury, which I was elected to do, Mr. Speaker. I'm very proud to be part of a government that is working for the people of Ontario each and every day, Mr. Speaker. And you know what, Mr. Speaker? This is all allegations, Mr. Speaker. Whoa. And I'm a member from the P and Carlton with draw. That's your second time. 
Finish, please. Thank you, but now that charges are laid in this case, it is our shared responsibility to allow this matter to be handled in the court of law Answer. under the presumption of innocence, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker, and back to the Minister of Energy. People have a right to raise questions about the minister's ability to do his job while being named in an alleged scandal. Why does the Minister of Energy believe he will be able to focus on and complete his ministerial duties under the shadow of scandal? Will he offer his resignation to the Premier? Thank you. Be seated, please. Be seated, please. Thank you. Thank you. Minister of Energy. Minister Attorney General. Attorney General. Uh, speaker, uh, I think we, we heard from, from the minister uh, uh, on how uh, he is an honourable individual who works extremely hard and serves his community and the people of Ontario and this government with uh, full integrity, uh, Speaker. Uh, there are no allegations in relation to the to the member. Uh, the allegations does not involve whatsoever his responsibilities as minister, and there are no charges, uh, Speaker, that are laid against uh, the member as well. He has fully cooperated in all investigations. There are now charges again, laid against two individuals who do not serve in the House, Speaker. This matters before the courts. We should respect their jurisdiction. I ask all members uh, to let the court do its job. Thank you. Thank you. New question, the member from Kitchener Centre. Thank you, Speaker. My question is for the President of the Treasury Board. Each year for the past seven years, our government has beaten the deficit reduction target put forth in the budget. This past year was no different. The province of Ontario beat its deficit target by $3.5 billion. Will you raise taxes? Member from Hamilton East Stony Creek, second time. The member from Durham. Finish, please. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I know that Ontario is tra on track to balancing the budget for 2017 2018. That'll please the heckling member to hear that. Much of the success is due to innovative cross government transformation projects designed to save money while also improving outcomes for the people of Ontario. Question. Projects like the Transfer Payment Administration Modernization. Member from Prince Edward Hastings, second time. Speaker, could the President of the Treasury Board please tell us about TPAM? Tell us how this thank project you. is helping. Helping the government. <clears throat> President of Treasury Board. Yes, thank you, Speaker, and thank you to the member for Kitchener Centre for her advocacy on government modernization. The Transfer Payment Moder Administration Modernization Project, or TPAM for short, is intended to streamline and modernize the government's approach to the management of transfer payments. Ontario makes transfer payments to more than 18,000 different organizations, to hospitals, school boards, municipalities, nonprofits, and many more. Approximately 82 per cent of all government expenditures are transfer payments, right. funds which are actually flowed through more than 20,000 different legal agreements and supported by 20 different IT applications. Treasury Board's TPAM project will reduce administrative burden Answer. for both government and transfer payment recipients while improving our ability to make evidence-based funding decisions. Thank you. Supplementary. The President of the Treasury Board just provided us with an excellent introduction to what TPAM is and how it's driving efficiencies. I know firsthand the impact of transfer payments. Since 2003, our government provided Waterloo Region $63 million in funding for affordable housing, assisting in the creation and repair of over 1,400 affordable units and preventing over 1,800 evictions. Last year, our government provided $1 billion in transfer payments to the Waterloo-Wellington Local Health Integration Network, which supports 34,000 virtual care visits in Waterloo-Wellington in 2015-2016, bringing care close to home through video conferencing for many people who have difficulty travelling to see their doctor. Speaker, would the President of the Treasury Board please tell us what is next Question. for the TPAM project? 
Minister, uh, Minister, President yes, thank you, Speaker. And as the member knows, one of our goals through TPAM is to develop a one-window portal where a given transfer recipient need only input their information once. That means that organizations that receive multiple transfer payments from multiple ministries often will not have to enter and enter and enter their information multiple times. They would only need to upload one copy of various important documents instead of re-entering it for each application. As a starting point, Treasury Board Secretariat is focusing on creating a common registration system to support that process for all time-limited and project-based transfer payments managed through Grants Ontario. And over the next two years, we'll add more transfer payment systems to the common registration system. Speaker, this is just one of a number of projects that are modernizing our transfer payment system, saving money, and reducing unnecessary burden for our transfer payment partners. Thank you. Thank you. No question, the member from Chatham, uh, Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. To the Premier, uh, we know that Pat Sabera told Andrew Olivia, and I quote, if there were other things that you particularly are interested in that is within her realm to make you part of, then she is more than prepared to do that, end quote. Well, Speaker, we're not getting any answer as to who ordered the Premier's Deputy Chief of Staff and top Liberal fundraiser to offer Andrew Olivier and the current Minister of Energy an Aleb bribe. So, Mr. Speaker, to the Premier, will you invite your Minister of Energy to step aside until this issue is resolved? Invite him. Mr. Speaker, um, again, I've been very open with this legislature, with the media, with the public, Mr. Speaker, uh, about the allegations uh, related to the Sudbury by-election, Mr. Speaker, over and over again. Uh, I have answered questions. The, uh, if you look at the answered, Mr. Speaker, from that time, you can see the, uh, the number of questions that I answered, Mr. Speaker. Now that ch charges are laid, um, it's our responsibility, Mr. Speaker, to understand that this matter is before the court, and it's before the court under a presumption of innocence. We're going to continue to cooperate with any independent investigation, Mr. Speaker, but as I said in 2015, if charges were laid, then Pat Silvera would step aside. That has happened, Mr. Speaker, and now the matter is entirely before the courts. Thank you, supplementary. The member from uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Back to the Premier. We know that Pat Silvera had a discussion with Andrew Olivier about a role. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was just uh, listening to the video before coming down here. It's on Andrew Olivier's YouTube. Anyone can hear it, and they can see what kind of backroom deals and shenanigans these guys have been up to for themselves. Yep. Pat Sorbera says whether it's a full-time or a part-time job in a constituent office, whether it's appointments, supports, or commissions, was up for discussion. But what we don't know, Mr. Speaker, is who over there who? ordered the Premier's Deputy Chief of Staff and a top Liberal fundraiser to offer Andrew Olivier and the current Minister of Energy a bribe. Good question. Well, thank you very much, Speaker. And again, uh, you know, Speaker, uh, these are just allegations. They have not been proven in, in, in the courts. Uh, the fact uh, that there are charges are late means that this matter has to be tried uh, before uh, a court, not in the legislature, Speaker. Not to mention, Speaker, I know the members opposite and all members of this House, as all Ontarians and Canadians, uh, understand and respect uh, the principle of presumption of innocence. Uh, speaker, in our system, everybody is presumed innocent until they're proven guilty. And in this matter, Speaker, uh, the people who have been charged uh, have not been, been found guilty. And, and, and we owe it to them that, uh, that we let this matter to be dealt with in a court of law, in a neutral, impartial uh, sphere, Speaker. Uh, that is how our system is designed for very good yes, reasons, Speaker. That is why we have separation uh, between our executive branch, our legislative branch, and, and uh, uh, Speaker, Thank you. Uh, and we should respect that. Thank you. New question. The member from Tomiskimi, Cochran. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Premier. As holders, of, as holders of elected office, we are responsible. The Chief Government Whip is warned. Finish, please. Thank you. As holders of public office, we are responsible for the public's trust. And I'm sure all of us in our various offices have always heard that 
the perception of conflict of interest is as damaging as the actual, if it exists, conflict of interest. In this case, the perception of wrongdoing is as, is as damaging to the actual public interest as if wrongdoing occurred. And we don't know if wrongdoing has occurred. And that is for the courts to decide. But Order. for the public trust, it has also been the tradition, if there is a question of wrongdoing for a person who holds public office to step aside while question. that investigation is conducted. And as a minister of the Crown, it is inherent to do that. I, my question to the Premier is why haven't you Thank directed you. that to happen? You say it, please. You say it, please. Thank you. Attorney General. Attorney General. Well, uh, thank you, Speaker, and I again thank the member opposite, who I have a lot of respect for, for the question. And I, 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 I was listening very carefully to his, his, his question, and I would say to him, Speaker, that there is no conflict of interest here. There is no actual or perceived conflict of interest. The allegations, Speaker, do not deal with anything that is the responsibility of the minister as the minister of energy. Uh, the allegations, Speaker, are not towards him. Uh, speaker, the minister uh, is not being charged with anything, Speaker. So there is no conflict of interest, actual or perceived whatsoever, Speaker. Allegations against two individuals who do not sit in this House, Speaker. Those Ever allegations from Hamilton are Mountain. For the court of law, Speaker. The rules of this House are very clear. Answer. When there are matter before the courts, it is best that it be dealt with in the courts, not in this legislature. I know the member knows Thank the you. rules, and I implore him to respect that. Thank you. Supplementary. Back to the Premier. It hasn't been proven yet whether or not there is an actual wrongdoing, and that's not the point. The point is the public trust, and there is precedent for this. There's a long-standing parliamentary tradition of cabinet members standing aside when investigations take place. And it's not just when they're part of the investigation. When then-Finance Minister Greg Cerbera was named, named in a search warrant in 2005, named, not charged, he stepped aside until the matter was dealt with. That was the honourable thing to do. That's what an honourable minister does, and that's what an honourable premier should make their minister do. The premier has the chance to do the right thing and ask her minister to resign while this investigation is going on. Will she do that? Thank you. Thank you. You say it, please. You it, please. Thank you. Attorney General. Speaker to the member again, there is no investigation as it relates to the Minister of Energy. Period. There, are no, there are no charges against the Minister of Energy. I think that is a very important point that the member opposite is missing. Yes, he can get emotional, and yes, he can try to sully somebody's honour, which is a, sp a speaker who is very much not in tradition with this House. We respect every member of this House as the honourable members. I think of the member opposite who have posed this question as an honourable member, Speaker, and it is highly inappropriate. I know he is above that to, to uh, disrepute any member of this House, especially, Speaker, they are under no investigation. There have been no charges that are laced against them. The charges, Speaker, have been laid against two individuals who are not members of this House. They are not in the employ of the government of Answer. Ontario, Speaker. Uh, we should respect the rules. We should respect our traditions. We should respect the principle of presumption of innocence Thank very much, uh, Speaker. Thank you. No question. The member from the Tropical Nation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Minister of International Trade. Great, Minister. Speaker, it's been a very busy fall for international trade. In October, the Minister visited New York City to discuss water technology and innovation, and the federal government successfully signed the Canada-European Union Trade Agreement. 
This month, the minister will be visiting India on an agri-food trade mission, and we know how important the agri-food sector is to this province. And the premier will be conducting a trade mission to Japan and to Korea. I know that Ontario is going to see a lot of economic growth and job creation from these missions. Here, here. In particular, I was proud to hear of the work the minister did in October in China to assist a phenomenal agency, Tourism Toronto. Speaker, could the minister please inform Portion. the House of his recent trip to China and the impacts it will have for Ontario? Minister of International Trade. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. I want to thank the honourable member from Etobicoke next door. Speaker, the member. Oh, keep doing it, please. <laughs> the member is correct in uh, the assessment of Tourism Toronto. I'm sure the Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sport would also agree. Speaker, in October, I accompanied Tourism Toronto to China wow. as they bid on and won the privilege of hosting what will be the largest travel delegation in Canadian history. Wow. Speaker, wow. Speaker, 6,000 6, of New Skin's most elite salespeople will visit Toronto in 2018. The delegation is expected to generate over 8 million in tourist spending during their visit. Answer. Speaker, the visit will clearly provide great benefits to Toronto's economy and I would like to congratulate Tourism Toronto on this fantastic achievement. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Speaker, this is incredible news to hear, and I'm sure everyone in the House would join me in applauding the work of Tourism Toronto and congratulate the Minister on his assistance with the bid. In addition to this success with Tourism Toronto, the Minister will join the Minister of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs on a trade mission to India in just over a week. Another good minister. As the House may recall, the Minister joined the Premier earlier this year on a trade mission to India, which was a tremendous success. I know India is a rapidly growing market and one of the largest economies in the world. It's obvious that forging strong economic trade and investment relationships with India uh, could be beneficial to our province. Speaker, through you to the Minister, what is the focus of the upcoming mission to India and how will it benefit Ontarians? Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker I want to thank the Honourable Member one more time for his question. Speaker, the Premier mission in India in February of this year was indeed a huge success. We witnessed the signing of 65 new agreements, valued at over 240 million and expected to create more than 150 high value jobs in Ontario. Here, here. We hope to build on that success for this mission by focusing on a key sector in a priority market, agri food. Speaker, Ontario's Ag goods are highly sought after, and this mission can help our ag food industry expand internationally. As Minister of International Trade, I will continue to work to identify Answer. key markets with opportunities for Ontario businesses, and I look forward to doing so in India. Thank you, Speaker. Thank, Thank you. you. The member from Huron Bruce, uh, point of order. Thank you very much, Speaker. I do have a point of order. I understand and realize the government's been distracted, but they still have a job to do. And unfortunately, there are six order paper questions that have not been answered. Three from the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change, one from the Ministry of Education, one from the Ministry of Labour, and one from the Ministry of Energy. I would appreciate those answers. Thank you. Although the preamble wasn't uh, appreciated, that is a point of order, and you are allowed to ask that question. I would turn to the government house leader for a response. Uh, speaker, uh, we, will, uh, we will pursue this and make sure that they are tabled in a timely manner. Thank you. Thank you. Member from Ottawa, South Ontario. Like thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to correct my record. I think in the introductions I said the Ontario Cairo Practice Association. What I meant to say was the Ontario Cairo Practic Association, and they are in room 228 right now. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Mr. Member from Durham on a point of work. To introduce a delegation from the African Unity Six Region, Canada, led by Mr. Ahmed El Bashir, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to them at Queen's Park. Welcome. Thank you. We welcome our guests. I do have some uh, news for our 
my colleagues? No, no, no. I, in, in, in all seriousness, um, this is the last day for our pages. And I would offer them our gratitude and thanks for the wonderful work that they did. There are no there are no deferred votes. This house stands recess until 1 p.m. this afternoon.